The book Love and Lies, Marisol's Story, is a continuation or a companion novel to my book that I wrote nine years ago called Hard Love. It takes a different tack because in Hard Love, the main character was John, also known as Geo, and Marisol was a secondary character. In this book, Marisol is the main character, and we come back to the story four months after we left it in Hard Love, and we see how Marisol's life is progressing and how she also finds a love or doesn't find a love. She's made a big decision not to go to college immediately, even though she got into Stanford. She decides to stay in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and write a book, try to write a novel. She's always been a writer. She's always loved writing. And she decides to defer college for a year and really tried to write a novel. And she has a job. She lives with her old high school friend, Bertie, and she gets a job to try to support herself, although her parents are still giving her some money, so she's not entirely separate from them. And she falls in love. The two things that she really wants to do this year is to fall in love, she wants to write a novel. She falls in love with the woman from who she's taking a how to write a novel course. And this is a somewhat troubled relationship. It's an older woman. Marisol falls madly in love with her. What we basically are seeing is whether she also has a hard love and whether she's going to be able to pull this relationship out in the end. She also meets another young lesbian woman who has a terrible crush on her, on Marisol. And so she's dealing with her feelings, really in some ways for the first time, those feelings of first love. So that's what this one's about. It's a little different than Hard Love, although it follows some similar themes. The first assignment that Marisol's teacher, Olivia, gives her is that she wants her to come up with two characters she wants her and the rest of the class to tell the names of the characters their secrets and what they already know about them just at the beginning of trying to start to write this novel and in fact that's a very similar process to the process i myself do when i'm beginning to think about a book usually i have sort of a vague idea of who the characters are and the main characters particularly, the first things I always need to do is to have a name for them. If I don't have a name for them, I can't begin to figure out who they are. And I also, like Marisol, have baby name books that I go to, and I make lists, as Marisol also does in the book. I'm usually first names and last names. I try to see how they fit together. I try to see how all the main character names fit together because you don't want them to be too similar they all have to resonate for me in some way. And, of course, I never know if they're going to resonate for the reader in the same way, but you can't know that. You can only know that they're meaningful enough to you that you'll be able to use that meaning when you're thinking about who these characters are. So the first thing that I do is to come up with the names. And then once I have the names in place, I start to write kind of a tentative first second chapter. Probably the first and second chapters of my books change more than any other chapters because I write them over and over and it's because I'm learning who the characters are as I'm writing the first and second chapters. It's kind of the only way I can do it. I can't make an outline. I can't seem to just make notes. I do make notes on who they are but that's not enough for me. I really need to write what's happening to them, how they're reacting to situations and to other people. And at some point, their voice will just click in and it will kind of get stuck in my head. And then I have the characters. And then I can proceed and go on with the rest of the novel. At some point early in the book, Marisol meets Lee, who is also a lesbian. She's a year younger. And she's moved to Cambridge basically to escape her home in Indiana She's just come out as a lesbian to her parents, and they're very disconcerted. They don't really know quite what to do with it. Her best friend doesn't know. 
And so she decides to finish her senior year in high school living with her older sister in Cambridge to try to get her thoughts together a little bit. She doesn't know anybody really, and one of the first weeks she's there, she goes into this coffee shop where Marisol works and she meets her. And Marisol kind of takes her under her wing. She recognizes that this is uh, somebody a little younger, somebody just coming out, somebody not too comfortable yet with who she is or how to be in the world. And she makes her a friend and she really enjoys her. But of course, there's not always the same feeling on both sides. And what happens is that Lee the younger woman falls in love with Marisol, who at this point doesn't want to return those feelings or can't. And so it's a similar situation to the situation that she had in Hard Love, the first book, with Gio, except that this is a more appropriate relationship for her, in some ways more appropriate than the relationship that she's pursuing with the older woman. I wanted Marisol also to have a hard decision to make, and I don't know that she makes the right decision. Whether she'll have another chance to correct her decision, I don't know. I don't actually know how to think about how the book ends, and I kind of like to leave a book at the end in a way that the reader can make their own decision about what can happen in the future. Some readers are frustrated with me for not sort of nailing it down, but I kind of like to do that. In Hard Love, when Marisol was writing in an autobiographical voice, I tried to make her sound very blunt and confrontational. But in this new book, she's doing an assignment for this teacher whom she wants to impress. So I felt like she would be writing in a more careful style, maybe pushing herself to sound older and more accomplished as a writer. But she is very smart, and she is a good writer. So I wanted her writing to certainly be more impressive than your normal high school student, and it's certainly more impressive than my writing was when I was a high school student. But I tried to show that she's still learning some things. I think that it sounds different than the rest of the book, which is, of course, my writing. But it's also, as I say, very different from the style in which she wrote in the first book, because she's trying to now elevate herself into not just, you know, Marisol, who's putting her every thought down on paper, but Marisol, who is working towards putting a book together and thinking in a more adult way about people who are not herself. So, yeah, I mean, Marisol is much more accomplished than I was, certainly, at that age as a writer. And I think more accomplished than most high school writers are. But, you know, every now and then you do find somebody who's really an amazing writer at that age. And I think it's not impossible for somebody to be that thoughtful and have that ability at that age. I have really always loved Marisol. I do connect with her. Although she's not me, she's not like me even, really. But when I was writing Hard Love, I realized at some point, though my main character was John, I'm probably more like John, personally, but I really loved Marisol. I just couldn't think of how to do a sequel, but once I realized it had to be Marisol's book, that was thrilling because I... I just find her a really compelling character. She's so confident, but she's very vulnerable, too. And I like that combination a great deal. I'm almost always surprised by what Marisol will say. And that makes writing a character so much fun. The only thing that is autobiographical is that I did live in Cambridge for six years, so I know that milieu pretty well. As far as the characters... You know, I was a young person who wanted to be a writer, but I was really not at all like Marisol. I'm not a lesbian, and I've never been a confident person, at least as confident as she is. I'm probably now, at my age, more confident, but she was always a very confident person, and I loved that about her. But having said that, there is always a part of me in all of my characters. Marisol says, 
out loud the kind of things that I have always wished that I had the nerve to say. I think a lot of writers probably feel that way. You know, you're allowed to say things through your characters that you would never personally yourself say to people. So she's a great character to work through. I never thought that I would write a sequel to any of my books because I always felt like once I was finished, that was the story that I'd set out to tell for those characters, and I didn't really, it felt forced to go back and come up with another story because I felt like I'd told their important story already. But I have to say, over the years, more and more people asked me for a sequel to Hard Love, and I couldn't quite figure out how to do it. I felt like you know, I'd already had Marisol graduate from high school, and usually once a character goes off to college, you don't follow them there and still call it a YA novel. And I didn't know where else Gio was going. I felt like his story really, I was not that interested in following as a main character. So at some point, I just thought, well, really think about it and see if you can come up with some way to go on with Marisol's story, since to me, she was the character that I was most interested in and wanted to follow. So when I came up with this idea that, well, maybe she didn't go to college, maybe she stayed in Cambridge for another year. A lot of kids you know, defer college for some reason, and uh, maybe that's what she does. So that was kind of the spur, and once I came up with that, I was able to kind of realize what the next page might be. But it would never have been John's story. I found a way to bring him into this book, and I'm glad that I did, and I'm glad that, in fact, their relationship continued to be something that really helped her. He'd kind of gotten over his initial, you know, crush love for her and gone on to um, find another girl that he was interested in. And I went to see what happened to Marisol. So that was a way to make that story new and interesting again to me. And it has to be new and interesting to me, I think, if it's going to be new and interesting to a reader. So I hope that it is.